Nos Fratu, Ein Symphony des Gräuens is a 1922 German expressionist vampire horror film, directed by F. W. Murnau, starring Max Schreck as the vampire Count Orlok. The film, shot in 1921 and released in 1922, was an unauthorized adaptation of Bram Stoker's Dracula, with names and other details changed because the studio could not obtain the rights to the novel. Stoker's heirs sued over the adaptation, and a court ruling ordered that all copies of the film be destroyed. However, one print of Nosfratu survived, and the film came to be regarded as an influential masterpiece of cinema. Plot Thomas Hutter lives in the fictitious German city of Esborg. His employer, Nock, sends Hutter to Transylvania to visit a new client named Count Orlok. Hutter entrusts his loving wife Ellen to his good friend Harding and Harding's sister Annie, before embarking on his long journey. Nearing his destination in the Carpathian Mountains, Hutter stops at an inn for dinner. The locals become frightened by the mere mention of Orlok's name and discourage him from traveling to his castle at night, warning of a werewolf on the prowl. The next morning, Hutter takes a coach to a high mountain pass but the coachman declined to take him any further than the bridge as nightfall is approaching. A black swathed coach appears after Hutter crosses the bridge and the coachman gestures for him to climb aboard. Hutter is welcomed at a castle by Count Orlok. When Hutter is eating dinner and accidentally cuts his thumb, Orlok tries to suck the blood out, but his repulsed guest pulls his hand away. Hutter wakes up to a deserted castle the morning after and notices fresh punctures on his neck which he attributes to mosquitoes or spiders. That night, Orlok signs the documents to purchase the house across from Hutter's own home. Hutter writes a letter to his wife and gets a coachman to send it. Reading a book about vampires that he took from the local inn, Hutter starts to suspect that Orlok is Nosfratu, the bird of death. He cowers in his room as midnight approaches, but there is no way to bar the door. The door opens by itself and Orlok enters, his true nature finally revealed, and Hutter falls unconscious. The next day, Hutter explores the castle. In its crypt, he finds the coffin in which Orlok is resting dormant. Hutter becomes horrified and dashes back to his room. Hours later from the window, he sees Orlok piling up coffins on a coach and climbing into the last one before the coach departs. Hutter escapes the castle through the window, but is knocked unconscious by the fall and awakes in a hospital. When he is sufficiently recovered, he hurries home. Meanwhile, the coffins are shipped downriver on a raft. They are transferred to a schooner, but not before one is opened by the crew, revealing a multitude of rats. The sailors on the ship get sick one by one. Soon all but the captain and first mate are dead. Suspecting the truth, the first mate goes below to destroy the coffins. However, Orlok awakens and the horrified sailor jumps into the sea. Unaware of his danger, the captain becomes Orlok's latest victim when he ties himself to the wheel. When the ship arrives in Esborg, Orlok leaves unobserved, carrying one of his coffins, and moves into the house he purchased. The next morning, when the ship is inspected, the captain is found dead. After examining the logbook, the doctors assume they are dealing with the plague. The town is stricken with panic, and people are warned to stay inside. There are many deaths in the town, which are blamed on the plague. Nock, who had been committed to a psychiatric ward, escapes after murdering the warden. The townspeople give chase, but he eludes them by climbing a roof, then using a scarecrow. Meanwhile, Orlok stares from his window at the sleeping Ellen. Against her husband's wishes, Ellen had read the book he found. The book claims that the way to defeat a vampire is for a woman who is pure in heart to distract the vampire with her beauty all through the night. She opens her window to invite him in, but faints. When Hutter revives her, she sends him to fetch Professor Bulwer. After he leaves, Ulla comes in. He becomes so engrossed drinking her blood that he forgets about the coming day. When a rooster crows, Ulla vanishes in a puff of smoke as he tries to flee. Ellen lives just long enough to be embraced by her grief-stricken husband. The last scene shows Count Orlok's ruined castle in the Carpathian Mountains, symbolizing the end of Count Orlok's reign of terror. Cast, Max Schreck as Count Orlok, 
Gustav von Wangenheim as Thomas Hutter, Greta Schra paragraph der as Ellen Hutter, Alexander Grinach as Nock, Ruth Landschoff as Annie, Wolfgang Heinz as first mate of the Empresser, Georg H. Schnell as Harding, John Gotthold as Professor Bulwer, Gustav Botz as Professor Sivers, Max Nemetz as the captain of the Empresser, Heinrich Witt as guard in asylum, Guido Heseld as innkeeper, Karl Etelinger as student with Bulwer, Hardy von Francois as hospital doctor, Fanny Schreck as hospital nurse, production. Nosfratu was the only production of Prana film, founded in 1921 by Enrico Dieckmann and Alban Grau. Grau had the idea to shoot a vampire film. The inspiration arose from Grau's war experience. In the winter of 1916, a Serbian farmer told him that his father was a vampire and one of the undead. Dijkman and Grau gave Henrik Gallin the task to write a screenplay inspired from Bram Stoker's 1897 novel Dracula, despite Prana Film not having obtained the film rights. Gallin was an experienced specialist in dark romanticism. He had already worked on Der Student von Prague in 1913, and the screenplay for Der Gollum, Wire and Die Weltkam. Gallin set the story in a fictional North German harbor town named Isborg and changed the character names. He added the idea of the vampire bringing the plague to his borg via rats on the ship. He left out the Van Helsing vampire hunter character. Gallin's expressionist style screenplay was poetically rhythmic, without being so dismembered as other books influenced by literary expressionism, such as those by Karl Mayer. Lotte Eisner described Gallin's screenplay as volpoesy, vol rhythmus. Filming began in July 1921, with exterior shots in Wismar. A take from Marin Kirsch's tower over Wismar Marketplace with a Wasserkunst Wismar served as the establishing shot for the Asborg scene. Other locations were the Wasserta, the Heelage and Geist Kirsch Yard and the harbour. In La One Quarter Beck, the abandoned Salzeitsche served as Nosfratu's new Asborg house, the one of the churchyard from Egidian Kirsch served as Hutters and down the Dvenau Coffin bearers bore coffins. Many walks of La One Quarter Beck took place in the hunt of Nock who ordered Hutter in the yard of Far One Quarter Chting to meet the Earl. Further exterior shots followed in Lornberg, Rostock and on Silt. The exteriors of the film set in Transylvania were actually shot on location in northern Slovakia, including the High Tatras, Vratina Valley, Orava Castle, the Vah River, and Stihad. The team filmed interior shots at the JOFA studio in Berlin's Johannesthal locality and further exteriors in the Tegel Forest. For cost reasons, cameraman Fritz Arno Wagner only had one camera available, and therefore there was only one original negative. The director followed Galline's screenplay carefully, following handwritten instructions on camera positioning, lighting, and related matters. Nevertheless Men now completely rewrote 12 pages of the script, as Galline's text was missing from the director's working script. This concerned the last scene of the film, in which Ellen sacrifices herself and the vampire dies in the first rays of the sun Men now prepared carefully. There were sketches that were to correspond exactly to each filmed scene, and he used a metronome to control the pace of the acting. Music the original score was composed by Hans Edman to be performed by an orchestra during the projection. However, most of the score has been lost, and what remains is only a reconstitution of the score as it was played in 1922. This is why so many composers and musicians have written or improvised their own soundtrack to accompany the film. For example, James Bernard, composer of the soundtracks of many Hammer horror films in the late 1950s and 1960s has written a score for a reissue. In 1989, venerable French progressive rock stalwarts Artzoid released Nosfratu on Mantra Records. Thierry Zerboitziff and Gar copyright Rad Aubert composed the pieces, to correspond with a truncated version of the film then heavily in circulation in the public domain. In 2010, the Malam Chamber Players of Durham, North Carolina, commissioned composer Eric J. Schwartz to compose an experimental chamber music score for live performance alongside screenings of the film, which has since been performed a number of times. Contemporary criticism, Nosfratu brought the director Manarian forced into the public eye, especially since his film The Burning Echo was released a few days later.
the press reported extensively on Nosferatu and its premiere. With the laudatory votes, there was also occasional criticism that the technical perfection and clarity of the images did not fit the horror theme. The film Curia of March 6, 1922 said that the vampire appeared too corporeal and brightly lit to appear genuinely scary. Hans Wallenberg described the film in photo stage number 11 of March 11, 1922 as a sensation, and praised Menau's nature shots as mood-creating elements. In the Vossisch newspaper of March 7, 1922, Nosfratu was praised for its visual style. Deviations from the novel the story of Nosfratu is similar to that of Dracula and retains the core characters a Euro Jonathan and Minor Harker, the Count, etc. a Euro, but omits many of the secondary players, such as Arthur and Quincy, and changes all of the characters' names. The setting has been transferred from Britain in the 1890s to Germany in 1838. In contrast to Dracula, Orlok does not create other vampires, but kills his victims causing the town folk to blame the plague, which ravages the city. Also, Orlok must sleep by day, as sunlight will kill him, while the original Dracula is only weakened by sunlight. The ending is also substantially different from that of Dracula. The Count is ultimately destroyed at sunrise when the minor character sacrifices herself to him. The town called Isborg and the film is in fact a mix of Wismer and La One Quarter Beck. Release Shortly before the premiere, an advertisement campaign was placed in issue 21 of the magazine Bar One Quarter HNE on film, with a summary, scene and work photographs, production reports, and essays, including a treatment on vampirism by Alban Grau. Nosfratu's preview premiered on March 4, 1922 in the Marmorsaal of the Berlin Zoological Garden. This was planned as a large society evening entitled Das Feste Nosfratu and guests were asked to arrive dressed in biodermary costume. The cinema premiere itself took place on March 15, 1922 at Berlin's Primus Palast. Influences, this was the only Prana film. The company declared bankruptcy after Stoker's estate, acting for his widow, Florence Stoker, sued for copyright infringement and won. The court ordered all existing prints of Nosfratu burned, but one purported copy of the film had already been distributed around the world. These prints were duplicated over the years, kept alive by a cult following, making it an example of an early cult film. The movie has received overwhelmingly positive reviews. On Rotten Tomatoes it has a certified fresh label and holds a 97% fresh rating based on 60 reviews. It was ranked 21st in Empire Magazine's The 100 Best Films of World Cinema in 2010. In 1997, critic Roger Ebert added Nosfratu to his list of great movies, writing, Here is the story of Dracula before it was buried alive in Klitscher copyright s, jokes, TV skits, cartoons and more than 30 other films. The film is in awe of its material. It seems to really believe in vampires. Is Menau's Nosfratu scary in the modern sense? Not for me. I admire it more for its artistry and ideas, its atmosphere and images, than for its ability to manipulate my emotions like a skillful modern horror film. It knows none of the later tricks of the trade, like sudden threats that pop in from the side of the screen. But no Nosfratu remains effective, it do us Euro unregistered trademark T scare us, but it haunts us. In 2012. Scenes from the film were used in the exhibition Dark Romanticism at the Star Currency Dell in Frankfurt as an example to illustrate the way in which ideas developed in 18th and 19th century art influenced storytelling and aesthetics in 20th century cinema. Derivative works, the song Nosfratu from the album Spectres by American rock band Blue Easter Cult is directly about the film. Werner Herzog's tribute film to Nosfratu. Nosfratu the Vampire starred Klaus Kinski as Count Dracula, not Orlok. The black comedy Shadow of the Vampire, directed by E. Elias Mirhaj and written by Stephen A. Katz, is a fictionalized account of the making of Nosfratu starring John Malkovich and Willem Dafoe. The novel NOS 4A2 by Joe Hill is a modern vampire story that utilizes the play on words of Nosfratu. See also List of films in the public domain in the United States, 
List of German films 1919 Euro 1933, Notes. References, Lottie H. Eisner. Hilmer Hoffmann. Walter Schobert, Die Da Currency Monisch Lenwand, Frankfurt am Main, Fischer Taschenbach Verlag, ISBN A3-596-23660-6 Lottie H. Eisner, Manau. Der Klassiker der Deutschen Films, Belber Hanover, Friedrich Verlager, Frieder Graf. Enno Patalas, Lichtos Berlin. Langlubich Manau, Berlin, Verlag Brinkmann and Bose, ISBN A3-922660-81-9, ISBN 9783922660811 A, Karen Mialinger. Vera Thomas, Nosfratu, in Hans Helmut Prinzler, Friedrich Wilhelm Mernori in Melancholica des Films, Berlin, Bertz Verlag GbR, ISBN A3-929470-25 Zan, Brill, Olaf, Film Nosfratu, Ein Symphony des Groens, retrieved June 11, 2009 uh, external links, Nosfratu at DBCULT Film Institute. Nosfratu at the Internet Movie Database, Nosfratu is available for free download at the Internet Archive, more, Nosfratu Complete Film on YouTube.